Coach, as we welcome all of you to our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. A moment ago, here was the scene. The Falcons coming out from their tunnel to the roar of all the folks here in Atlanta. We're ready for football as these Falcons get set to match up with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. This is Alvin Kamara who made the Pro Bowl in each of his first two NFL seasons. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. They'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Breeze now. He'll let it fly in the direction. He's got a man complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. 33 yards that time. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. Throwing on first down is Breeze. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Grady Jarrett making his presence felt. He gets the sack. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. But that's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Throwing on second and long. Breeze. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. Now Breeze. They'll set up the screen now to Kamara. There he goes inside the 30. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. They get 15, but they still need it a little bit more. Fourth down. Now Will Lutz, who went to college, a stone's throw from here at Georgia State, comes on for the field goal attempt. Right hash mark, a 42-yard attempt. And Lutz's kick is good. Had just the one big play on the drive, but that was enough to put him in field goal range. Yeah, one big play of what they hope will be many others throughout the game. Every team has a different target for the number of plays like that, those explosives that we talk about. That allowed them to put points on the board on that drive. Let's see how the rest of the game goes. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Back out comes the Atlanta Falcons offense. And i has got to take this time to say, what is going on with the Falcons? They were 1-7, and seven, and in the last two weeks, they get blowout wins over good opponents. The most recent rendition, Week 11, 29-3 over Carolina. What's going on in Atlanta, Charles? Well, maybe they were just waiting to get into divisional play. Right? They hadn't played a single NFC South team prior to going to New Orleans and blowing them out. Then they stayed on the road and went to Carolina and jumped the Panthers. This is a heck of a team that's playing right now. This is the team we thought we would see at the beginning of the season. Now it's coming together. 55 to 12 advantage in the last two weeks in those games. And you mentioned the divisional opponents. Well, guess what? They've got a three-game stretch against divisional opponents and all at home. Tampa Bay, New Orleans on Thanksgiving, and then Carolina again. A carry for Devontae Freeman, who missed most of last season. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. 
And Falcons fans everywhere excited that Devontae Freeman is back on the field wearing number 24 in the red and black. Remember, he went down in week two in 2018 with an injury and didn't return. They're hoping to see the form that led him to 1,000-yard seasons in 2015 and 2016. They go play action here on first down. And he can't escape the pressure. Ryan goes down. Sheldon Rankins abruptly ends that play with a sack. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. Give him three yards on the run. Now they'll need to drop something good here on third and 13. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action hit them over the top. Third and long. It's Ryan. And it's complete. Hooper. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 16. First down, Falcons. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. On first down, Ryan gets it off to Freeman. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Now the first carry for Brian Hill. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stop that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. And he completes this to Russell Gage. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 17-yard line. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I like what they tried to do there. They didn't get a completed pass downfield. But they came off of a momentum play. Big time gain on the previous snap. Came right back and threw one deep, hoping to catch him on their heels. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Back to the running game. It's Freeman. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Really good stop there by the end in this 4-3 defense. Yeah, not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, shed those blockers, and go get those ball carriers. On third down, Ryan. He goes underneath to Freeman. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I'm not sure that this play was designed for him specifically, but they got through the progressions and got the ball to him. So second catch on the drive, he may not be a primary guy, but they definitely want him involved, don't they? Uh, absolutely. This early, the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can get him going to pass. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons have taken the lead. 
boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails? Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Now play here for a touchdown. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one taken from the seven. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. CD, I want to ask you about the NFC South as the Saints come back out onto the field here. Okay. You know, they're 8-2, and two, and that win against Tampa 34-17 in Week 11 just furthered their advantage in the division. They've now got a three-game lead over Carolina. Is this one all but over? I think so, but going into the season, didn't we think this would be one of the most competitive divisions in the league? Mm. Because I thought Atlanta would press New Orleans first. Carolina, you know, is always good. Tampa was an unknown. But how about this? Three of the next four at home for this New Orleans Saints team. Carolina comes to town, and then they get a revenge game. Because remember, Atlanta jumped them a couple weeks ago in New Orleans. That's on Thanksgiving night in Atlanta. And then at home for a monster game against San Francisco and another one against Indianapolis. Breeze will try again on second down. Well, this is caught by Gam. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Speaking of Michael Thomas, 94 catches on the year through week 11. He's the first receiver ever, Charles, to top the 90 reception mark in his team's first 10 games. And what makes it even more remarkable is not that he's just an exceptional talent who's worked his way into being one of the top receivers in the league. He's done it with two different quarterbacks this year. When Drew Brees got hurt and went out, he connected with Teddy Bridgewater, similar fashion, and put up big numbers. The all-time record? It's 143 held by Marvin Harrison, and I will guarantee you this, Michael Thomas knows that number. Ryan to the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Ryan looking downfield for Jones, and that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. But one thing's for sure, when you get a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you got to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Here's Ryan. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. From the gun, it's Ryan. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. Cameron Jordan wreaking havoc with a sack. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. On fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. 
Deontay Harris deep for New Orleans. An eight-yard return there after a punt of 47. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, Ready? that complimentary Ready? football Ready? comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. The Saints spent a third-round pick on Trey Quan Smith out of UCF in 2018, and what a thrilling season for him. He was the guy that caught the pass from Drew Brees that moved him past Peyton Manning to become the all-time leading passer in NFL history. Throwing again on second down. Brees, that's complete to his running back, Kamara. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. First down, Saints. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's... And this is caught inside the five. It's a gain of 34. A one-handed catch, that's one thing, but with a defender right there, that was a heck of a play. It used to be that one-handed catch was instinctive in a game. Now it's a practiced move. They work on it before, Shane, after, during practice 56, sessions. It becomes part of their repertoire, and it pays off. They'll run it with Kamara. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here this close. Sneak it. I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. Ready. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Give me that ball, defense. Give me that ball. Breeze now to throw. To the end zone, but knocked away and incomplete. The pro bowler Michael Thomas was the intended receiver, but now it's third and goal. Now we got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle, partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. They go with a fullback line, and they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. Well, big man with ball met bigger man on the other side of the line. A really nice play for the defense. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the left hash, you'll have to cut this at a tight angle. The fake field goal catches everyone by surprise. And once again, the Saints are back out in front. And you don't see the fake field goal often. Here it works for a touchdown. And sometimes you see it called in the biggest stages. How about a couple of years ago, Packers Seahawks, and the Seahawks trying to rally? Fake field goal helped them win it and go to the Super Bowl. Lutz good on the extra point. And the lead is now 10-7.
After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This one taken from the seven. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now first and 10, just shy of the 30. From the shotgun, Ryan. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Falcons on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and four. Ryan going to give to Freeman on the draw. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Third and medium, they opted to run instead of pass, and it worked. First down. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. This is Freeman on first and 10. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving, the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Let's go, deep tight it. Let's go, deep tight it. On second and nine, Ryan. This one caught by Ridley. The reception good for seven. It's third down. That's a game of seven. The Falcons on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. Here it's third and three. Now it's Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Ryan now, 8 of 11 in this first half. He's got it first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. 15 yards, first down Atlanta. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. They'll run on first down. It's Freeman. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. They stay on the ground. This time it's Hill. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. To throw on third down, Ryan. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Cameron Jordan, his second sack of the night. 
I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the Let's crossbar, go, bounces back out. He had it online, but it comes up about a rotation short. Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that, too. But it was a crossbar that said otherwise. Hey, and that'll deny him a shot at three. Good field position to start the drive after the missed field goal. Here's first down from the 42. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Shotgun now for Breeze. And it's hauled in by Jared Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Jared Cook is a guy who's been around the NFL. He's been with the Titans, the Rams, the Packers. In the last two years in Oakland, now he makes a move to the Big Easy, where he pairs with Drew Brees and forms a nice little threat. On first down, Brees. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack. Back at the 47-yard line. Allen Bailey credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. There's Breeze. And this is Cook with the ground. The reception good for seven. It's third down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. The Saints on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and nine. Working from the gun. It's Breeze. Jim has it complete. And yeah, brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. Breeze to another longtime vet, Ginn, for the New Orleans first. In his 13th NFL season now, Ted Ginn, still a reliable target for Drew Breeze. 787 yards in 2017, just five games last year due to injuries, but he still has the wheels. They run it for the first time with a backup, Murray. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. I'm going to hit you all day. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They stay on the ground. This time it's Camara. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Seven here yards there at a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Ready, yellow lady. Get in the white room. Get in the white room. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. What an advantage having a elite guy to build a defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. here, second and 11. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The Saints on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. From the gun, 
it's Breeze. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He made his first, this from 47 yards out. The kick by Lutz is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer this time? Yeah, they, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Clock running, and the Falcons moving with a sense of urgency. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. I know exactly why he tried to throw the ball to Julio Jones there. He's never considered covered. He's either too fast or too strong. You always try and get it to him. Especially on those deep passes. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. To throw is Ryan. Stocker's got it, complete. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Ryan now 11 to 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. He sets to fire deep. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. They'll get the first rounder, Caleb McGarry, there. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Let him know, let him know. Again, Ryan. He's got Freeman here. It's complete. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. Time of factor is Ryan will hustle him to the line. Play action, Ryan. He's going to have the hook up to Gage. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 29-yard line. First 
Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This one from 46 yards out. And his kick is good. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They go play action now. Ryan, incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. On third down, Ryan. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cameron Jordan bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Ryan Allen now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. On the return, Harris. That's a 49-yard punt, eighth, though, on the return. Now the attention turns to the Saints' offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And here's a throw that's taken in by the tight end, Cook. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. Just a yard in the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. 
Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. He gets this away. It's a good one, drawing toward the sidelines. Now the Falcons' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Play action. It's Ryan. Looking deep for Julio. And got his man complete. A gain of 32 that time. Hey, you need a big play? Go to your big play guy. Listen, that's football 101. When you have to have it, you expect that guy to step up. A lot of people call these receivers divas. Sometimes just leadership when they get in the huddle and say, get me the ball, I'm about to make a big play. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. And he will find Ridley, that's complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. After the penalty, here's Freeman. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And it'll make this a second and long. Again, they'll run with Freeman. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Here's Ryan. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And his kick is indeed good, and that's going to tie us at 13. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little, maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right? As he watched that ball leak to the right, trying to, trying to bring it back in and had just enough to get it done.
All square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Saints coming out now to take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Don't want to get behind the sticks because... Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. It's Desmond Trufant. And he will score. Touchdown, Falcons. Well, we know this defense has athleticism. Spots like that prove us right. I love the way that you spotlighted the athleticism because you and I both know the best athletes on the field, they play on defense. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I was a kicker. you got to remember that now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Crew able to connect on the extra point, and they will take a seven-point lead. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They trail 20-13 to 13 our score as they have it first and 10. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try to get the offense going with Kamara. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Ricardo Allen, the safety, makes the stop. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Ready? You ready? Second and five now. Breeze. That'll be complete to Cook. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. Breeze now. 13 of 15 passing. That's good for 87%. It's first and 10. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He couldn't get the hook up there that time with Thomas. And that'll bring up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to hold that one in. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Now Breeze. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Breeze to throw again. And this is going to be incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late, and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. 
Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Big Sheldon Rankins there to bring him down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Second and nine now from the 21. Ryan leaves with Freeman on the draw. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. From the shotgun, Ryan gets it off to Freeman. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. 15 yards, first down Atlanta. Ryan now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Out of the gun. It's Ryan. This one caught by Ridley. Seven yards. The pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Ryan will throw again. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. A handoff, Devontae Freeman. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On third down, Ryan. It's caught. Jones. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Ryan to Jones, the Falcon connection there for a first. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Ryan in the offense with a first and 10, and he's hit on all six of his throws on this drive. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. 
Ball on the 30 as they come up, second and 10. Ryan on the handoff, it's Freeman. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Now Ryan, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Sheldon Rankins able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, it took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Now it's Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. That's going to set them back five yards. How crucial will those five yards be? We'll see as they come up again here, third and goal. From the gun, it's Ryan. Going right side here, and that's complete. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game, his third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense, you get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Drew Brees, six fourth-quarter comebacks a season ago, and that led the NFL. He'll try to deliver another one. Now this throw caught left side. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 44-yard line. First down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. 
Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Again, it's Breeze. He gets it to Thomas. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The offense on third down tonight, it's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Well, he's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. He lost two and it brings up fourth. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they keep handing it to him. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. And throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. On first down, Freeman. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Freeman again. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to lead to a third down. Ready, Blue 80. 125. 54. Mike, 54. 55. 55. From midfield now, here's Ryan. And it's complete. Hooper. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's a first down with a cherry on top, 31 yards. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Here's Ryan. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in the second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Ryan now to throw on third down. Yeah, he's got it. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll look to run with Freeman. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Falcons push further out in front. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And the lead now up to 14. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled ready, and hit from ready. distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And Kamara has it stripped. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but if the other team hey, doesn't get it, lady, lady. that's a huge difference in the ball Tonight. game. And in this case, they were able to retain five, possession. Five, six, six, Breeze now on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. That's a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong. He's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Eight, five, eight, five, eight. Watch the pass. On first down, Breeze. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. 
He was trying to get it to his running back, Alvin Kamara. That'll bring up second down. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. But again, they'll throw with Breeze. It's caught. Smith. And he'll be down at the 46. Well, they go from 146 to the other on a pickup of eight. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Breeze looking to throw on third and two. And he finds Cook. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. Let's go, let's go! Ready, 5-9. Check, check, you can knock. Let's go, D. Let's go. Breeze now on first down. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. Yeah, baby. Boom. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Breeze to throw again. And brought in by the tight end Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Now, the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. They'll give him eight on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. Bree's one of the best ever in these situations as he's trying to get his guys set. To throw again on second down. Breeze. That'll be complete to Cook. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. Ready? You ready? Now, Breeze again. But he's got Smith here. No gain there on the completion. It'll be second down. And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. The Saints in the hurry up here. Clock continuing to roll. Looking to throw again on second down. Breeze. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Brady Jarrett in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Second goal. Last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. They'll get to the line here. But remember, it's also third down. Shotgun now for Breeze. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. The field goal doesn't help. They're going to go for the six here on fourth and goal. Breeze to throw for it on four. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. Down. Ready. Ready. Mike 54. Mike 54. We own it. We own it. 
And they'll indeed take a knee. And they just took a timeout with two seconds to go. This one obviously decided. Not sure they needed to take it, but we'll take it with them. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. A little clock management 101. Oh, wait, hold everything. A timeout has been called. Seemingly silly with one second remaining in this game. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. The Falcons in victory formation as they take an aim. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points, that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them with just a field goal? That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan. Pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish. Just love the execution. Love the tenacity. Love the way they finished. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Falcons here as we say so long from Atlanta.